Welcome. You're listening to the Bulldog Educator Podcast, hosted by yours truly, Kirsten Wilson. Thank you so much for listening. Music created for the Bulldog Educator is by David Galvez. Podcast platform is through anchor.fm. Hi, listeners. I wanted to share with you something that is going on, and this is really pertinent right now. I am doing this advertisement as part of a charitable initiative in partnership with Ballot Ready, and I'm not getting any um, money with this. This is an unpaid opportunity, but I really wanted to share with you. The goal of this initiative is to increase voter education and encourage you guys to get the vote out during the 2020 general election this November. Ballot Ready is a nonpartisan voter guide to every race and referendum. Most voters, you guys, will enter the booth knowing who you want to vote for president or governor or senator, but you're not prepared for everything else. But every position on the ballot matters. Judges, school boards, water commissioners, and city councils make the decisions that affect our everyday lives. A voter who goes to BallotReady.org can enter their address to see their entire ballot, and from there they can compare candidates based on stances, on issues, biography, or endorsements. Once they've made a decision, they can save their choices and use that when you go to the polls to vote. Voters can also use a requ- um, also request a ballot to vote by mail and find their polling place and make a plan to vote. I hope that you'll take advantage of this. I know I'm going to because this and every opportunity to vote is the way that we continue to make sure that our voices are heard and that we are well represented. Welcome to the Bulldog Educator podcast with your host, Kirsten Wilson. This is episode seven, season one, where we're going to be joining with Karen Norton, who is the recruitment and retention specialist at Arch Forge Education Service Cooperative here in Arkansas. She has 25 years of experience with eight in the classroom. She was an instructional facilitator for science and math and then moved into administration. She also has a son who lives in Perryville and is a football coach there and a daughter who is in North Carolina med school. She's been married to her love of her life for 35 years. She's also um, a self-proclaimed tech geek and is part of the hashtag EduR Edu Sisters. Please join me in this podcast as Karen and I talk about new teachers preparing for a new year in a pandemic and some of advice for veteran teachers and administrators as well. Take a listen as we have a little chat. All right. Welcome to the Bulldog Educator Podcast. Um, this is my first guest Um, on the show, and I am so thrilled to be joined tonight with Karen Norton. Uh, Karen has been with uh, me. We know each other as colleagues at Arch Ford. She is well respected in the field of education, and uh, previous to this recording, I um, gave a little bit of information about Karen, so you heard about that before the start of our um, talk tonight. So the topic that we're talking about tonight that Karen's going to share with us her insight um, and her expertise is on new teachers and advice that we can share with new teachers as they start their career in education, but specifically new teachers as we begin a very unusual year um, starting in the middle of pandemic for the 2020-2021 school year. So Karen, um, I, I guess I'd like to start off with um, what is probably the most important thing um, a new teacher should know? You know, I think especially this year, um, one of the things that a teacher, the new teachers need to realize is that the, the playing field's pretty level. Um, I just met with a group of novice teachers today and we talked about the fact that, um, you know, seasoned teachers are in a very new place right now as well. And so I really encourage novice teachers to use their voice because a lot of times when a new teacher starts um, starts in a brand new school, they're a little bit intimidated and maybe don't feel like they bring as much to the table, but I really encourage them to share what they know because they're going to bring a lot of resources um, specifically to this new school year, giving the state of um, the pandemic, they're going to bring a lot of resources that seasoned teachers may not be as familiar with. And so I just really encourage them to use their voice and not be afraid to ask questions. Um, you know, sometimes we see 
asking questions is a weakness, but in reality, if you're not asking questions, that's when it becomes a weakness. Absolutely. Um, one of the things that we say with Virtual Arkansas is um, the more questions you ask, the better off you are because we don't know the questions you have. And so we cannot anticipate or provide all the answers unless you ask the questions. Um, and sometimes Absolutely. we don't even know the answer. So when you ask a question, it means that maybe we've got to do a little bit more work on our side to help support you. And so those questions are really important. So I 100% agree on that. I also love the fact that you talked about the value that new teachers bring um, into the circle um, with us veteran educators. Um, I think that's so important that their, um, what they have and what they have to offer is honored and that there's a space for that. So thinking about that, how do we ensure and protect that space for new teachers and their voice? You know, one of the things that um, that we do through our novice teacher program is we um, we ask each district to provide a buddy teacher for your one novices, and we really encourage those buddy teachers to um, to support and encourage the novice teachers in terms of elevating their voice. And I think that we, it's also important to help our novice teachers understand the the value of a professional learning network. Um, we talk extensively with those who are in our novice program in years one, two, and three about the value of that network. And we talk about the fact that it's really important to create a network um, that doesn't uh, create an echo chamber. You want people within your network who's really pushing your thinking and really kind of nudges you outside of your comfort zone. And so by, um, by working with the, the novice buddy teachers, um, encouraging them to also get involved with that professional learning network with the novice teachers, we just believe that that is such a valuable resource because it connects them with um, other educators, not only across the state, or the, or the nation, but across the world. And so um, place where you can go and ask questions and bounce ideas off of, but also get some pushback. And we all need that from time to time. And that takes a, a lot of courage and a lot of vulnerability. Um, but we really stress to our novice teachers to uh, develop that network and we provide them tools and suggestions on where to go to build that network. I think that is so true that you have a professional learning network. And just a little side note or tidbit, Karen, you and I actually met on Twitter before we ever met face to face through a Twitter chat. Um, and so as you said that, I was thinking about how we had already met and had that connection before we ever met face to face. Um, and so uh, it's kind of surreal when you do meet um, one of your Twitter PLN people face to face and you've been chatting with them online for years. Um, and so, yeah, I think it is so important for teachers. It is. It's that. almost like meeting a rock star. <laughs> I certainly yeah, felt absolutely. that way when it's I met like you. <laughs> Oh, well, you're sweet, same, same. <laughs> and you've brought so much value um, to, to, to my life and to my practice because I, I enjoy the Bulldog Educator, following you on Twitter and the things that you put out there um, really helps to build, to build my esteem, but it also helps to build my practice. And that's what I think we should all be focused on, including new teachers. And we talked a lot, we always talk a lot about the value of building our practice and looking at opportunities that's going to help us grow um, as a professional. And um, you mentioned the thing about building your self-esteem and I just thought about um, what are ways that you would recommend um, to new teachers to celebrate? Because I think sometimes as new teachers we can really get kind of, um, I don't know, down in the dumps or, or a little bit overcritical of, of what we should be doing or how we should be doing it. How, what are ways that you recommend that new teachers celebrate their successes, big and small? Well, I think, you know, I think one way to do that is to put it out on social media. And the reason that I encourage them to do that is because, you know, we're the only ones that can tell our story. And we're a reflection of our classroom. And oftentimes, 
we don't share the, the great things that are going on with our profession or within our classrooms. And I think that's super important. And our families are on social media. And um, I think it's important for our families to see us celebrate the things that are going on with us professionally and the things that are going on in our classrooms with our students. And so I just encourage them to use these social media platforms um, to celebrate the big things and the little things, um, because that's what gets us through day to day. Um, is to really think about even the small breakthroughs, those small celebrations, we need to celebrate those in a big way. Awesome, that's some great, really good advice. Um, I think it's also important as educators that we remember to celebrate one another and support our colleagues. And when we see them making great successes to celebrate them as well. Um, and, 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 and even like reshare what they're doing or retweet what they're doing because the more positivity that we're sharing about the stories that of things that we're doing as educators helps those around us to see what great work is happening for our students in education. Um, so I, I thought about that as you were talking about that. Um, well, I agree, Kirsten. And one thing that I would add to that is that, you know, when they see a teacher celebrating another teacher, that just models that collaboration that we know what that's what educators are all about is building um, building that team and that um, that kinship and collaboration. And so I just think that by celebrating another educator's success just models that for um, our families and for the public. Absolutely. Um, I don't know if you, um, if, if your new teachers have heard of this before, but um, I always tell people I don't have an original thought. It always comes from an inspiration of somebody else's idea and I operate off the base theory, borrow and uh, steal everything. Um, but I'm always real careful to make sure if I can remember when I get an idea and inspiration where it came from. And if I can't remember, I always say, this was not my original idea. I got it from somewhere. I just can't remember where. How important is it as a new teacher if you see an idea or something inspires you to in some way acknowledge where that came from? Absolutely. I think it's very important. And, and we had some conversation around that throughout our training. Um, we just finished our fourth cohort um, of year one novice teachers today. And we've had some conversation about kind of that intellectual property. The big push right now is for these virtual classrooms that are being built in, in uh, uh, Google Slides. And um, I am blown away at how teachers are so giving of their products. And so we talked a little bit about that today because they're just allowing you to force copy their work and just drop your Bitmoji down in there and use it as your own. So we talked about the importance of, you know, you may not remember the name of that educator, but all you have to say is, you know, a great educator um, off of Facebook shared this, um, this slide with me or whatever. But letting folks know that um, this is not my original work but again it goes back to um, just showing how collaborative and how giving um, educators are I'm um, so excited to see how much work is being put into these virtual classrooms and being freely shared it's amazing it absolutely is in fact I know um, what you're talking about these Google slides or um, these classrooms you're talking about um, I jumped into a class, I think it was two weeks ago, maybe when they had this class and I am actually creating a session for my own teachers that I'm not having to um, create any of the content for it. I'm just building it in our learning management system and giving it to my teachers because of the generosity of other teachers providing all of the resources. And so I can get this to my teachers without having to create it myself so that I can focus on some other things. So I am so very grateful for those teachers out there who have been um, spending all this time and sharing so freely so that I could then share with my teachers as well. So that is, that's huge because it just doesn't impact the teachers. It impacts the administrators who are trying to share ideas as well and maybe don't have the um, time to develop the resources to the extent that it's already been developed. And so I, 
I'm so grateful for those teachers out there that have just run with this and shared so openly. And some of them, frankly, have been pretty funny. Um, I saw one today that had <laughs> a room full of cats. Um, and, and, and that just made me giggle. Um, so they're having a lot of fun with that. And that reminds me of another point. How important is it for us to have humor and what we're doing on a daily basis? We have to. I mean, you know, we have to learn to laugh at ourselves, number one. And and it's so funny because, you know, when I was coming through um, my undergraduate, when I was in my undergraduate studies um, you hear all the time oh you when you enter the classroom you can't smile until December so we had some conversation around that very comment and we talked about how um, kids need humor in their lives too I know one of our specialists at the co-op when she's doing um, when she's doing her workshops she incorporates humor into her sessions and when she assigns table talk, table talk roles, one of those table talk roles is joke of the day. And someone in that group is responsible for um, being prepared to share the joke of the day. And so I think that's just such an interesting take on how to spread humor and how to learn to laugh, not only at yourself, but to laugh with your students because they need that. It makes you more, I think it makes you seem more real to them and it allows them to see the human side of you. And um, so we just kind of dispelled that old, um, that old saying of, you know, you can't smile till December. You need to infuse humor. In fact, Bar Bob Marzano in um, his compendium of instructional strategies in one of the folios, he actually has a strategy built around humor. So research backs up the fact that humor is a very valuable component in the classroom. Absolutely. Um, one of my favorites, you know, I talk about him a lot, George Kuros shares about um, humor and he told the story, he was telling a story about how he had uh, a seasoned teacher tell him, you know, don't smile until December and he, he decided to throw that advice out to the wind and focused on um, connecting and he had a kiddo that had some trauma in his life and, and, and um, just was not having a really good day and and George was having a conversation with him and the, the kiddo was really mad and he's like, well, I hate you and all my friends hate you. And George paused for a moment and he, then he said, well, you know what? I'm all good. And, and he goes, I've got plenty of, of 12 year old best friends right now. So I'm all good on that. And the kid just stopped in his tracks and started laughing. And it was what broke the ice. And then they were able to get to the root of what was going on. And um, that story stayed with me that in that moment, George used humor to actually get to what was really going on with that kid. And I think that humor does connect us in a way. And it does sometimes break up, break down those barriers that we put up to try to protect ourselves um, with, with, you know, as teachers and um, as students and become what we need to be, which is vulnerable with one another. Yes, absolutely. So um, one of the things, and I noticed it today, um, in fact, I was thinking about it, that, and I knew that we would be talking tonight, is I saw a quote on one of the social medias that I follow um, from Monica Genta, and it said, every single teacher is about to have their first year teaching again. And, I, and it was in reference to that we, nobody has ever started teaching in the middle of a pandemic. And so I kind of wanted to like tie over into some of the things that you said about new teachers today, but what are some things that would ring true for both new teachers and veteran teachers, um, advice for them? Well, you know, um, I, I just recently uh, saw a, um, a graphic on Facebook and, and it was put out by Chalk One Up for Teachers. And it said that the, the three most um, important school supplies for the new school year will be patience, flexibility, and grace. And that really struck me because I thought, you know, that's exactly right. We're gonna have to have patience to learn new things because um, none of us are completely savvy in lived and learning. This is, this is new for, for nearly all of us, right? Mm -hmm. um, 
flexibility in that we know the word pivot is a, is a word that may become overused, but we may have to pivot from face to face instruction to um, virtual instruction, you know, on a dime. So we're going to have to have flexibility. We're going to have to have flexibility with our parents. We're going to have to have flexibility with our kids because we're going to have kids that are going to come back into our classrooms that have been traumatized in ways that they've never been traumatized before. You know, we know that um, that children have been home um, where there may be food insecurities, where parents may have lost their income. I mean, children may have been faced with the loss of a parent due to the uh, due to COVID. So those are some things that we're going to have to just learn to be flexible and um, figure things out as we go, because this is the first time we faced anything like this. And finally, we're going to have to give ourselves some grace, because I know that, you know, as a teacher that has a lot of years experience, um, there are times that I feel very inadequate right now, right? And I know that there are other teachers out there that feel the same way. You know, it's almost like you feel like you ought to have a handle on this, but you don't. And so I think from brand new teacher to a teacher who's been in this profession for 35 years, we're going to have to give ourselves some grace and we're going to have to give our kids some grace um, because we're all figuring this out together. And I think what better time to come together as a profession? Uh, we know that the world's looking at us right now. Um, we have been resilient. I think we proved that we were resilient when March 16th hit and we haven't been back to school since and we still taught, right? We still taught. I just keep thinking back to, um, to Rita Pearson who talked about every child needs a champion. And right now, uh, Kirsten, I really feel like every teacher needs a champion. And, and that's kind of the way that I feel like my role is right now is I am going to be cheering these teachers on because I know it's hard. And I know that we're going to be faced with a, a lot of unknowns, but if anyone can do it, the folks in this profession can. 100%. Um, one of the things that I thought about um, as you were talking about that quote by Ted Nelsoloni, I can never say his name correct, but he said, the best thing about this job is that it matters. And the hardest thing about this job is that it matters. Um, and I and I think I thought about that. And then there was a top 10 list that Georgia come out with um, about new teachers. But the last one he talked about is you're going to cry and that's OK. And um, and I thought about that and I thought, you know, new teachers and, and, and teachers that have been in this business for a while, this is going to be hard. There are going to be times that you're just emotionally spent. And it's okay to have that, that moment just to cry and release and let out that emotion. And there's nothing wrong with that. And I guess for those that are listening, I just want to encourage you that it's okay to cry and find someone that maybe is not in the same place as you are at that moment. So they can kind of let you cry it out and talk you through it. Um, because it, there are going to be moments. I mean, Karen, I'm sure you've had a few moments in the last few weeks as we've started to prepare teachers. I know I've had some moments because um, I've been thinking about my teachers that are coming back and um, I'm just, I don't have answers for some of it. And I, I don't like not being able to have, you know, that, that assuredness for my teachers. Um, so thinking about that as administrators, what can we be doing for our teachers, both new and veteran teachers, to take care of them? And you kind of spoke about be their champion, but what, what are some specific things that you would want to tell administrators right now? Well, I think, I think one of the biggest things um, for both administrators and for classroom teachers is that you are going to have to be intentional about self-care because this is going to be an emotionally taxing um, back to school uh, beginning and um, you know I heard I heard one of uh, one of our specialists say the other day that you know we've been preparing our minds for several weeks going through PD and getting ready for school but we've got to make sure we prepare our hearts for what's coming for the kids that are coming right and so uh, my best advice to administrators is um, to just support your teachers emotionally um, check on them um, check on their families, 
be visible because they're going to need your support. And a lot of times it just takes seeing you in the hallways, in the classrooms, really stress that, um, that self-care model, that self-care for them. Um, you know, it, you know, the old adage, you can't pour from an empty cup that goes for administrators as well. And just like teachers model for their students and students watch and hang on to every word that the teacher's saying, and well, guess what? Teachers are doing the same thing to administrators. They're watching. And um, it's important for uh, administrators to walk the walk. And I can say that because as a former administrator, you know, I had, um, I had moments of not doing a very good job with my self care and they would call me out on it. My team would call me out on it because we had that kind of relationship. And so I would just encourage you to acknowledge and celebrate the smalls, um, celebrate them loud. Um, for everyone to hear because we're going to need a lot of celebrating. Um, make sure that um, your teachers are emotionally supported. You know, have a plan for that social emotional support. Um, and make sure that you have someone that's going to be providing you social emotional support too. Um, that's a, an administration is a difficult job. It's even more difficult now as we are faced with the unknowns because um, because I know having been an administrator, the weight's on your shoulders to make sure things are running smoothly. Even if you have a fantastic team, you still feel responsible for your team. So you've got to practice self-care. You've got to um, support your teachers in social emotional um, that social emotional area, and you've got to celebrate. Absolutely. Um, I was thinking about, um, cause we are at virtual Arkansas are getting a lot of phone calls from administrators, um, have been since, um, we went into COVID-19 closures in March and then, you know, that's just continued through all this time. And, uh, one of the things I've started to put into practice is when they call me before we get down to business, I just ask them, how are you really doing today? And is there anything I can do for you personally before we get started about the business that you called about? And, um, even though they may not share a lot, it changes the tone of the conversation and you can almost hear like the weight coming off of their shoulders and that exhale that they need for that moment. So, and we still talk about the business, but giving them that moment to exhale, I think is so important. And, and we need to provide that for our teachers too. Another practice that I started doing because I tend to um, send emails when I think of things and they're not always at the right time of the day <laughs> is that I've started using the snooze on my emails so that they do not end up in anybody's inbox until eight o'clock in the morning. So they're not getting emails at you know, all hours um, of that, of the day. And that, that's just kind of like, as I think I send. And so I have started employing that practice and what I've noticed by employing that practice, they in turn are uh, respecting that practice with me and I don't get emails at odd hours of the day or the evening as well with my teachers. And so um, that's something that maybe administrators could uh, just a simple thing um, that, you know, when you send emails, send them. And if you have, if you think about it at 1030 at night, send it with the snooze where it doesn't appear in the inbox until the next day at the appropriate time. Um, and that just, yeah. I think that's a good practice um, and, and it's it seems to be working for me and I feel better too when I'm doing it instead of sending it and sending it to where either they get it that night and they get the alert or the next morning and they wake up, it's in their inbox because who wants to wake up to emails, right? <laughs> <In> emails, right. <laughs> um, well, you've really shared a lot with us tonight, um, but I don't want us to finish without giving you an opportunity. Is there anything else that is on your heart um, or your mind that you would want to share with teachers and administrators um, out there um, that listen to the Bulldog Educator? Well, I think it just goes back to what I said earlier that, you know, number one, I'm just so proud right now to be an educator. While I'm not on the front lines heading into a classroom, I am so proud of those people who are. And if anyone can do it, I know that the people in this profession um, are dedicated and they love their kids and they're going to go do the very best that they can, whether it means face to face, 
pivoting to virtual and pivoting back to face-to-face, -face, they're going to do it and, and they're going to make it look easy. I know that they can do it and you've got a lot of folks uh, back here cheering you on mm -hmm. and um, I'm excited to watch how this year unfolds because I know it's going to be a success. I 100% agree with you. I think that um, our educators are going to just show the world how amazing and flexible and versatile and how we still accomplish educating our children with love, care, respect. And we're not just giving them an, an academic education, but we are giving them a well-rounded education to help develop them as citizens and develop those, leader, those leadership skills and those talents um, in those kids um, that I, I know that some of them tomorrow can turn around and do something amazing, or maybe they're in the process of something in the future. But I am just excited to be part of this profession. I'm excited, Karen, to partner with you to get this message out to our teachers and our administrators. And I want to echo what you said. Um, just all the, the blessings and, and thoughts are with you guys as you head into this year and know you have an army of people behind you that um, are cheering for you and care greatly for you and are with you in this. So um, I just want to encourage you all in that. And Karen, how can people um, connect with you on social media so they can help develop their pro professional learning network? Thank you for listening to another episode of The Bulldog Educator, hosted by yours truly, Kirsten Wilson. You can find The Bulldog Educator on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram using the handle at thebulldogedu. That's at thebulldogedu. You can also find us and content related to education and this podcast on our blog at thebulldogedu.org.